So we're now going to look at how to calculate the length of a curve, a position vector function. It's actually a formula that's introduced in the single variable part of the calculus sequence, usually in the second semester in the Western world. I can't speak to how it might be introduced in other parts of the world. So if you have a vector function, this one happens to have three components, and time goes from A to B, so we're, you know, we're looking at, you know, what happens to the curve from here to here in two or three dimensions, and we want to measure the length. Um, the letter symbol used for that is the lowercase s for arc length. It's not from an English word. I believe it's from a German word, but I like leaving little tidbits for you guys to go search later when you have time. It's the definite integral from A to B of a magnitude. The there's several ways of writing it. I'm going to write it so it fits best. X prime and Y prime squared and Z prime squared with respect to T just because it fits better on the paper. But it would be more proper to call this DX DT for example and square that for a better formal notation look. And in case this might look somewhat familiar, when you take the first derivative you get velocity. This is equivalent to the magnitude of the velocity vector. So if you integrate the velocity vector it will help you find the length. Let me rephrase that. If you integrate speed you will find the length. Or you could say rate times time equals distance. Distance equals rate times time. All right, we'll call that one of the first physics formulas you ever met. Now, I'm not going to do a full proof, but I can do a little bit of a derivation, and we really are supposed to try to derive as much as possible before we transfer onto a even higher levels of education. So we're going to come back to this sheet and I'm going to show you a little derivation. So let's suppose I look at this curve again, R of T, and we're going to look at uh, the two dimension case only. All right, so we're going to just, just look at two dimensions sort of justify this. And let's let's zoom in on a little piece of it here from here to here. You know, the whole thing is curved, but if you make a small enough cut, it's almost linear. It's almost linear. So this is going to look like something that's almost linear. But I'm going to pretend it is linear and see what I get. Let's call this delta x and let's call this delta t and the length here the length here you could call it s which is the square root of delta x squared plus delta oops let's call this y shall we y squared. Little Pythagorean's theorem. And the arc length is approximately equal to the sum of a whole bunch of these. I would just break it up into lots of little pieces and if you make the pieces small enough 
we will get a good approximation. And remember, we have a calculus tool for a sum. Delta x squared. And if I were being a little bit more appropriate with notation, I might call this i and say this goes from 1 to n. And we would break this into n regular subdivisions if this were in first semester calculus where integration began. But I'm just going to do some manipulation of this and show you how it turns into our arc length formula. Um, let's see. So this expression I can say is equal to, so this is equal to the next expression. All right. Delta x i squared delta y i squared and I'm going to say this is delta t squared over delta t squared. It's all in the root. This is equal to 1. There's no harm in multiplying by 1, is there? Then I'm going to choose to distribute a portion of this. Delta x i squared delta t squared delta y i squared delta t squared and then I've got a delta t squared not a full proof I'm just showing you sort of the key scenes in the migration from I can find the length of a little linear segment how do you find the length of the entire curve almost there delta x i delta t squared delta y i delta t squared delta t now we're going to take a little hyperspace jump there might be a limit that happens here and one or two other little sub notations but when we're finished we will end up with an integral dx dt quantity squared dy dt quantity squared and then we would have to know where time began at end so t goes from a to b some time period not a full proof just sort of an exploration from how did it get there. I said we're going to come back to that original sheet. I like exploring the source of the information and reminding yourselves that integrals are addition tools and if you can break something up into small components and add them, uh, you know, you computer programmers, that's what you do. You don't do calculus necessarily, you do sums of very small quantities that can be added up very quickly. All right, let's go back to here again. So we get to this formula of arc length. I'm going to show you one more thing about this formula before we call it quits with the segment and then in the next segment I will do a couple of examples. So arc length, um, if you were to define a function magnitude of velocity and I'm going to have to change some stuff here so I'm going to use a different color when I do that just to express that I need to make some changes I would like to put the letter T here so that means these cannot be the letter T you can't use the same variable for this two completely different purposes so I could call it um, smiley face We'll just call this smiley face. We actually have in our first semester of calculus when we learned about definite integrals something called the fundamental theorem. And part of the fundamental theorem says, you know, if you set a variable boundary on an integral, you can basically use this statement. If you integrate and then take the derivative, you'll be back to the function you began with. So this is 
another way of saying that if you take the derivative of your position you're going to get your speed the first derivative is speed the connection algebraically if this is calc 1 I would have fun showing you about this it's not too difficult but it takes more than two lines of paper to do it next time a couple of examples calculating or the definite integral for arc length